You want to succeed in your career, your finances, as well as in your relationships, both personal and professional. Well, after you watch this video, you'll have a clear understanding of what studies say is the single most important leadership, organizational success, and relationships skill. And most importantly, you also have a very simple but potentially powerful technique that you can begin to use today to develop, practice, and improve this skill in yourself. Many of us think that we make most or all of our decisions based on intellectual analysis or at the very least based on rational thought. The science shows unequivocally that we don't. Brain studies show that the emotional reactive survival areas of your old brain are aware of and responsive to events and circumstances nearly half a second before your conscious, rational, or intellectual parts of your brain are even aware of them. Simply put, you most likely always have an emotional reaction to things before you're even consciously aware that that thing has happened. And this isn't limited to only emotionally charged experiences. It's almost certainly true of all experiences. Evolution has hardwired the oldest, most primitive areas of your brain to instinctively and emotionally react to things around you and within you. This helped our ancestors survive 100,000 years ago when immediate and instinctive reaction rather than rational thought often meant the difference between life or death. And because you typically cannot eliminate your hardwired responses, Managing yourself and your relationships requires that you're first aware of the complete range and the habits of your feelings. And then you must identify, practice, and maintain optimally positive, empowering, and productive alternative responses to your emotional triggers. Otherwise, you're left to your hardwired and self-limiting instinctual reactions, which are, which are typically some version of fight, freeze, or flee. And fighting, freezing, or fleeing are rarely, if ever, productive responses to professional, social, or personal productivity, success, and prosperity. But alas, there is one tool that's shown in study after study to be the number one most important and predominant tool or skill in leadership, in organizational success, as well as in strong, healthy, productive relationships, both personal relationships and professional relationships. So what is this skill? Well, you probably know based on the title of this article or video, but it's emotional intelligence, also known as EQ. EQ is the single biggest predictor of performance in the workplace. The link between EQ and earnings is so direct that for every point of an increase in EQ adds $1,300 to annual salary. EQ is comprised of four interrelated specific skill categories. And the first and perhaps the most pivotal of these four skill categories is self-awareness. Easy enough, you say, after all, you are a self-aware person. Well, think again, because while experts say that roughly 90, 90% of people believe themselves to be self-aware, the same experts also say that, in fact, only about 15% of people are self-aware. So at least 75% of people are fooling themselves. And before you convince yourself that you're not in that 75%, Consider the Dunning-Kruger effect. Dunning-Kruger states that in effect, you're not as good as you think you are. Because we all, to varying degrees, but we all overestimate how good we are at things. And especially with soft skills and attributes such as leadership and emotional intelligence. Your first reaction to an event is always going to be an emotional one. Even if it's subconscious, it's automatic. None of us have control over this part of the process. Where we do have control, though, is in awareness and then in choosing subsequent thoughts, feelings, and actions. Through mindful practice, you can develop your EQ skills and learn to spot your triggers and your instinctive reactions and then practice more productive new ways of responding to your emotional triggers. So the four pillars of EQ are, first, as I've mentioned, self-awareness. Second is self-management. Third is other awareness, awareness of other people. And then fourth is relationship management.
So in order, order to effectively practice the second pillar of EQ, self-management, you absolutely must first have a healthy degree of self-awareness. Makes sense, right? So how can you improve your self-awareness? Well, the complete list I have of techniques uh, to improve your self-awareness are in my transformational leadership videos. So check those out. But let me give you just one simple but potentially powerful technique you can begin practicing today and one that will, when regularly practiced, significantly improve your self-awareness and therefore your EQ. First, put a rubber band on your hand, not on your wrist, because if you put it on your wrist, you're likely to soon become acclimated to it being there and not be aware of it consciously. And we want you to remain consciously aware of the rubber band most of the time. Now, if you're operating machinery, driving, or doing anything else where any sort of hand impairment could potentially be dangerous to anyone, absolutely do not put the rubber band on your hand. Wait until you're in an environment where restricting your hand somewhat, even if only minimally, will not be dangerous to you or to anyone else. So keep the rubber band on your hand. Move it around on your hand. Shift it from your right to left hand also throughout the day because you don't want to be acclimated to it just being in one position and then you're no longer consciously aware of it. And you want to become consciously aware of the rubber band and each time you become consciously aware of it, take five to 20 seconds to check in with yourself and take the following several steps first. Ask yourself, what am I feeling right now? Give what you're feeling a label, not a qualitative label, label like good or bad, but label what you're feeling as clearly and concisely as you can. Label it uh, elated, joyful, sad, confused, worried. Studies show that simply labeling what you're feeling will diminish its hold over you. Next, ask yourself, why am I feeling what I'm feeling? And again, don't ask this from the mindset or the intention of judgment as either good or bad. Rather, you want to identify the internal or external trigger that caused you to feel this. You'll find that most of your feelings are habitual and most of your triggers are also habitual. And third, ask yourself, what more empowering and positive choice could I make right now? then actually choose to feel that better choice in your body wherever it is you feel it. For example, you might choose the feeling of empowerment in your gut or in your heart, or you might choose the feeling of gratitude in your heart. Just pick a more empowering and positive choice and manufacture it in your body in the moment. And if you discipline yourself to practice it, It'll become habituated. You'll find that your experiences in general and your EQ skills in particular will grow significantly. Click the link below right now and get the full exercise sheet for this video so you can begin taking advantage in improving your skills.